Hi, in these videos we are going to learn how to make a color run tree from dailies to final grading using DaVinci Resolve. In the first video we are going to learn how to set up a project for dailies. Then we are going to export dailies and metadata for editorial. And in the second video we are going to conform with the original files and retrieve the metadata and color information we created before on our color grading project. The imaging pipeline of each project is unique and the complexity varies from production to production. In this example project, the color is developed a show look during the camera test with the DOP in ACES, and the DIT is applying CDLs or color decision list to modify that show look based on the characteristic of each scene on set. Usually, show looks have tonal adjustments that affect the whole image holistically, and their mission is to try to encapsulate the visual identity of a show. If there are specifics on the scene that need adjustment like exteriors, day, nights, or maybe we need to make the scene warmer, we can modify the show look using CDLs. This is a common and modern color managed workflow. Since we are using ACES as our color management framework, we benefit from all the advantages of color managed pipelines, like the possibility of exchanging great recipes between post, onset, dailies, and VFX with the certainty that the reproduction of the original creative intent will be the same no matter what software or monitor we are using. A show look in an ACES pipeline can also be referred to as a look modification transform or LMT. Anything that changes the starting point of the ACES pipeline can be called an LMT. This means that an LMT can be very simple or very complex. Technically, an LMT should have ACES 2065-1 AP0 linear as the input and output. Because of the current limitation of LAT export in Resolve, the method described here create a LAT to be applied in ACES CCT. We will refer to it as a look LAT, so as not to be confused with the proper ACES LMT. Conceptually, as a modification of the ACES starting point, they achieve the same goal. If we are creating our look in Resolve and we are using Resolve controls to achieve that look, then our look will be done in an ACES CCT color space. If we export the look as a CDL and a show LAT to share with other departments, then both the CDL and the look LAT will need to be applied in ACES CCT. This is important to document and communicate efficiently to other departments since we need to make sure that all the other departments are loading the great recipe correctly in their color pipelines. If you are interested in learning more about ACES in Resolve, here is a link to a video with more context about ACES and how to set it up correctly. In this project, since the final grading with also occur in Resolve, the color is saved at DRX with the nodes that make up that show look as well as a LAT that will be sent to set to be able to reproduce the same look on set. Back to this example, in the daily lab, we are receiving a resource project every day, with all the media that was recorded and with the color pipeline already loaded by the DIT or data manager. In this case, there is only one look for the whole project, so it should be loaded in the timeline module. This way, all the clips go through the show look. Since the DIT created clip-based color decisions, we will need to apply those on the first node of each clip in the clip module. If there was more than one look, we must create groups per look. Then, all the clips of that look need to be added to that specific group, and apply the show look in the post group module. If you want to know how to create looks per group and apply them to clips, click this video. Despite the fact that on set they use the look lat for loading the look to monitor the images through the show look, and that we even have that lat loaded on Resolve, we will load the actual nodes of that look on the project instead of the lat, since we have the grade at our disposal as a DRX. This provides more flexibility to the colorist because all operations done in those nodes can be reviewed and even changed. By loading it in the node tree, we also make sure that all the image processing is as accurate as possible, 
since LAT has limited accuracy. Swapping the LOT for the actual grade should not have introduced any changes on the resulting image. Once we make sure that what we have is correctly set up, we are ready to start our daily task. On the daily slab we will be doing the following. Syncing audio and video files for review dailies. Input relevant metadata information relevant to downstream teams. Best light grading to match every clip from each scene. Real-time playback for quality check. Render proxy media for review and editorial. Export metadata as a database to pass on to downstream teams. Before we continue and since we did not create this project, let's ensure that all settings are correct for processing dailies. For conform, the most valuable information that provides uniqueness to each clip is the real name and the timecode. This allows for automatic relinking and optimized downstream workflows. So the following step is crucial to ensure the whole conform and VFX pool process is healthy. The first thing we're going to do is to enable results to identify every clip with a unique real name. Let's open the project settings by clicking on the small gear icon on the bottom right side of the interface. First, we will configure our project resolution. This will be different on each show depending on the camera and sensor resolution chosen by the production, as well as the extraction area defined for each capture resolution and the target aspect ratio. The best way to communicate this information is through framing charts. Please follow this link to learn more about how to create one for your project. It is crucial for the daily lab to have access to these framing charts so that they can ensure that the images are mapped according to the creative intent defined by the director of photography on set. In our example, we'll fit the whole frame on a 177 container. Users can also apply black bars on top of the resolution mapping if needed. Here is a link on how to do that in Resolve. Let's go to the General Options tab. Here we need to make it very clear that the timecode will be the one embedded in the clip too. And we will assist using real names for the source clip file name. This may differ depending on the conforming workflow, but in this case, we'll be using source clip file name, since that is a common practice to default to. Now we need to make sure that any color operations made inside DaVinci Resolve is exportable as a CDL. Let's remember that a color decision list can embed the color information as metadata and will travel through the whole post-production pipeline seamlessly, since it can be opened in any post-production software. Still, in the general settings, we can see the option Default Luminous Mixer to zero. Luminous Mixer is a setting in the color panel that compensates for any brightness loss when adjusting leaf, gamma, gain. The problem is that this operation is unique in Resolve. No other software will use this operation in its primaries, and it will not be written in the CDL. That's why we are defaulting this operation to zero when working onto a daily project, to ensure CDL compatibility. In other words, we are making sure that the decisions made in Resolve will accurately be represented in other software when the same color pipeline is loaded. Now we need to make sure that our project color management is correctly set up too. Let's move on to the color management menu. Here the settings should say ACES CCT, since this is an ACES project. If you want to know more about these settings, click this link. Let's save these settings and start making dailies. We have already imported our high res media. And the first thing we need to do is to synchronize our video with the corresponding audio. In Resolve, you can do this process using two different methods. The first one is by letting Resolve automatically sync audio and video using either the timecodes found on both video and audio tracks, or by comparing the waveform from the audio recorded by the camera and the separate audio file. The second method is to manually sync the clips by aligning the playheads of the video and the audio files. Syncing audio and video is really easy in Resolve if both sources have timecode tracks. 
All you need to do is to select clips or folders you want to sync. In our case, we are going to select the audio sync bin and the video sync bin and Resolve will display the content of both folders in the media pool. Then, we will right click in the bin and choose Auto Sync Audio. Here we can sync the file based on the timecode. Let's do it. After it's finished, let's play the clip to hear the newly synchronized picture and sound clip. Test Sorry, can I go quick do, do that one more time? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> now, let's see the case where audio is off for some frames. We are going to select this other bin with this original camera footage. Then, open the audio menu and select the waveform tab. Still, if we check what is in the video, we can see a clapperboard at the beginning. This will help us to sync the video manually. Now let's click this audio clip. Here we can see the waveform and a sound peak corresponding to the clapperboard. Based on the script report, we know that this audio clip corresponds to our video clip. Let's move the playhead in the video clip to the exact frame where the assistant closes the clapperboard in the scene. We can refine this with the left and right arrows on our keyboard. Then, go to the waveform and move the playhead to the beginning of the audio clip to see the first waveform peaks that indicates the clapperboard sound. You can also play back the audio to make sure that the peak corresponds with the right moment. Then, at the audio panel's bottom right, Click the link and link button, and the clips are now linked. Let's play our newly synchronized picture and sound clip to make sure the process was done correctly. Right above the El Matador, you know it? The one with the... As a tip, if you need to resync the elements, you can turn off the linked clip button and change either the audio or video sync point. Finally, if you need to offset the audio for further adjustments, you can find the shortcut to slip the audio one frame in the tree menu. Metadata is the best friend of a professional workflow. It lets us add a lot of information from each file into a database, and that information can travel throughout the whole post-production process, from department to department. Now we will start adding some metadata. First, we need to select one file and open at the top right of the interface the metadata menu. By default, we see the metadata related to the codec coming from the camera. Still, we want to add more information. Let's select the drop down menu and select shot and scene. In the shot and scene menu, we can notice that the recently sync already have information in the scene, take, and common fields. This is because the video took the metadata information from the audio clip we use for the sync. Usually the onset sound record will add this metadata on the go. This way of retrieving this type of information is a common workflow. In some other cases we need to write the information manually. For example, in keyboard we can write bish and if we press enter we confirm it. This word automatically goes to the internal dictionary of Resolve for predictable writing future cases. We can also write information in the description section. We can add metadata to multiple clips too. For example, we can mark these two clips as circle takes, or as we call it in Resolve, good take. Then hit save at the bottom of the menu, and as you see, my two clips have the same information. Finally, if we switch to the technical detail option on the metadata drop-down menu, we can add the name of the LAT used on set to monitor that specific clip in the scene. Usually the look LAT name goes here too. Let's spend some time adding metadata information to our clips. What can we do with this metadata? In the media pool, if we switch from the thumbnail view to the list view, we can see the name of the file. But this name, even though it's very important for media and data management purposes, 
it is irrelevant to editorial. Usually the editor renames the files manually to scene take for a better description of the clip. In our case, we can use the metadata fields added before to rename all clips really fast automatically. Let's select all clips and right click clip attributes, then the name tab, then the clip name checkbox. Here, if you write percentage and the name of any of the metadata fields, you can rename the clip based on that metadata information. Let's write percentage shot underscore percentage scene underscore percentage good take and hit save. As we notice, all my clips already have the name we customize. Isn't that awesome? Now we can align with editorial to be able to create the correct pattern that they may prefer. If we want to see the file name next to our customized clip name, we can right click in the gray part of the list view and we can enable file name and real name from the list. Doing that, we can notice that we never modified the original file and that we populated all clips with the real name based on the settings we enabled in the project settings before. In other words, this clip renaming is not compromising the conform process, rather, it is enriching it. After adding metadata, we can match the clip's grading to have a more seamless editorial experience when switching between cameras. Let's move to the color page. Here we will start a look from scratch, import our pre-designed show look, then some per clip CDLs from set, and finally further refine the matching of the clips on a scene. Let's go to the gallery view. Right click in the gray part and select import. In the pop-up windows, let's search for the show look DRX. Then, in the node window, move from the clip mode to the timeline mode and type Alt-S in the keyboard to create a new node. Now, go to the gallery and right-click in the recently imported steel and select Apply Grade. As you see, because we applied the node tree on the timeline level, all the clips in our timeline are passing through the show look. However, as we saw before, each clip may have adjustment specific to a scene or even to a setup. This adjustment can be technical or creative. Regardless of the type, they must all be communicated through CDLs that we can apply in our timeline according to the instructions provided by the DIT on set. In our example, the DIT adjusted the look per location. So now we are going to import pre-designed CDLs that the DIT created on set hand to hand with the DOP of the show. In the gallery, right click and search for our folder with the CDLs. Now you can select our CDLs and click import. After importing them, we will apply the corresponding CDLs to the clip that were changed on set. But you can notice in the gallery that we cannot see the thumbnail image in our CDL. What we can see instead is the ASC logo. In order to correctly apply the CDLs to our clip, we need to follow the DIT report from set. With that information, now we are ready to apply the CDLs with certainty of which CDLs go with which clip. Let's right click in the still and select apply grade in our clip. Based on the imported CDLs, we are going to match some clips. But before moving anything in the color palette, let's remember that in order for CDLs to be compatible with other software, we need to reduce our color operations to a slow offset, power, and saturation. In Resolve, you don't see those names. Instead, they are called Leaf, Gamma, Gain, and Saturation. If we use any other tool in the Resolve color page, the CDL will not carry that operation. Based on that, let's match some clips using just Leaf, Gamma, Gain, and Saturation. As a tip, try always to use the scopes when matching. Help yourself compare the image with tools like the wipe. This will allow you to compare a specific part of the clips or waveform.
If you want to compare the clips or scopes next to each other, the split screen view can achieve this purpose. Also, a great tool for matching is to use multiple playheads. We will enable it in the color menu at the top of the interface and then go to active playhead. Here we can activate up to four different playheads in our timeline that we can position in any part of the timeline to compare scenes or clips without saving them in the gallery. Let's enable playhead B. We will notice that we will have a playhead B in our small timeline at the middle of the interface. If we move it, we can notice that we still have the playhead A. We can position these two playheads at any part in our timeline. As a tip, if you want to move fast between playhead instead of selecting them manually, you can customize them with a shortcut. In this case, I'm using Ctrl Alt A and Ctrl Alt B to move between them. Finally, always check your match scene in real time. This will let your eye know the luminance changes between the images. As a best practice, performing some level of technical QC to the image is important. Many productions play back all footage shot on a day in the search for major technical problems that may be happening that are hard to spot on set. This way we ensure that if technical failures happen with the capture and pre or post processing of the original camera footage, production is aware of this and they can either correct or reshot a given take or scene. It is recommended to perform this QC on a control environment at a 4K resolution with the highest debayer setting possible based on the circumstances of the project. While doing that QC, you can also log any notes in the description fields on the metadata tab. After matching the clips, it is time to export editorial proxies and our dailies review files. In the case of dailies, remember to ask the post-production house what is their preferred codec for editing. Based on that information, we will customize our render settings. Let's start with editorial proxies. In our case, we will generate files for Avid Media Composer. So we can start with the Avid AAF preset. In the codec, select DNxHD. And in the type, DNx1080p 36 8 bit. Before exporting the file, we will add some born ins to the file to easily see the timecode and metadata information in our dailies. This is where inputting the metadata before really pays off. Go to the workspace menu at the top of the interface and select data born in. This is the data born in menu. On the left side, we can customize which information we want to born in our files. And on the right side, we can customize different options for the appearance and position of the information on our screen. Let's select the following checkboxes. Source timecode, source clip name, camera, good take, date, day, shot, take, and scene. And organize them using the tools at the right part. Try to leave them in a space where they will not interrupt any important part of the image. As a tip, in the custom fields, you can write percentage wildcards to add metadata that isn't one of the default checkboxes. Also, you can set up this layout as a preset and it will save us a lot of time in the future. Let's open the option menu and select save as a new preset. We will save it as a dailies layout. To complete the process, let's close the window and you will see in the viewer all of the fields of information we added to our clip. Then we are going to select the location and click add to render queue to add the editorial proxies to the render list. As a tip in the render queue, we can click the job one box to rename the process. In this case, we will write editorial proxies. For the dailies review render, we will deliver them to PIX. Find here the PIX specs 
However, each project may have different specifications. Let's start with the H264 master preset. Then, in the video tab and in the quality settings, restrict to 4000. Let's move to the audio tab. To ensure that the spec is correct. We can also automate the output name based on the metadata we input before. This can be customized based on the way in which editorial names the files. It is important that both editorial files as well as the review dailies have the same naming convention. We can start writing percentage, scene, percentage, take, as we already learned, but if we want to save time, we can write percentage, EDL, space, clip name. And this will automatically use the same formatting as the name setting from the media pool. Remember, you can use this technique anywhere where you can type text in Resolve, like in born ins Or you can also add folders by adding backslash. Next to render instead of single clip, we will click the option individual clips. This will render each individual clip independently. Finally, since review dailies needs to have extra information born in, we need to change the born in template for this deliverable. Let's open the advanced settings and in the data born in dropdown menu, select the dailies review template that was previously created following the instructions described before. If we want to save this setting as a preset to use in the future, we can click on the options button and save as a new preset with the name of dailies for review. Then we are going to select the location and click add to render queue. Type in the job box to review dailies. Then select both jobs and render all. It is also essential in dailies to export all the metadata we added to our clips like QC nodes, slate information, as well as the color information as CDLs. For this purpose, we are going to create an LLE CDL file. An LLE can travel easily through the post pipeline. This LLE CDL can be imported into any other editing software. Let's move to the edit page. And in the media pool, select the timeline we are working on. Right click, then select export and choose ALE CDL in the pop-up window. We will save it in the dailies folder. Since Resolve cannot read LLEs later on, we should also export a CSV to ensure that all the metadata can be imported later into Resolve again. For this reason, we are going to export CSV files with all the information from the media pool. Let's move to the file menu and select export metadata from media pool and save it in the dailies folder. We will use the CSV later when we confirm. Here is a video on how we load the CSV back into Resolve. After exporting our ALE CDL, it is important to review what is in the file. We can use your preferred spreadsheet viewer to view the content of this file in the form of a spreadsheet. Here we can see all the metadata we added in Resolve, like shot, take, and scene. And if we move forward, we can find the CDL's value we created per clip in the ASC field. With all this, the editorial process can start. The editor can easily find useful information with the metadata added and the editor and anybody looking at the cut will see the same color as when it was recorded on set with the visual identity of the show and all scene specific adjustments made by the dailies colorist.